There is one more thing that you can do with this two-point tracking, and that is a rather cheap way of 2D stabilization. Now, for example, if you have very shaky footage, the camera is rotating and jittering a lot, then you might want to stabilize the footage. And in that case, you can make use of two markers just like these. So you have already seen that you can have uh, like viewport stabilization by enabling lock to selection or just press L and by hitting Alt A, this point will now be perfectly stable here in the center of the footage and the footage will be just moving around. But this is really just for the viewport and will not have any influence on the footage itself or in the composite or video, whatever. So that is really just an option here for the display in the movie clip editor. So we cannot use that if you want to stabilize the footage. So let's disable that again. And instead you have to go to the reconstruction mode. So here in reconstruction, you can enable over here 2D stabilization. And when you do that, and let's expand this panel too, then you can add this marker to the stabilization by hitting this little plus sign here. So now this marker will be used to stabilize the footage. But if you now hit Alt A, nothing seems to happen. But that is because the stabilization is happening in the background and you cannot see it yet. So to see the stabilization, here in the reconstruction mode, you have to go to the display panel and enable stable. And now you have this dashed outline around the footage. And if I hit Alt A, then you can see that now the footage is again moving around just like before with lock to selection. But this can now also be used for rendering and compositing. So this is now perfectly stable here, right in the center of the footage, but that's maybe not what you want. So in that case, you can lower the influence so that there's just a little bit of stabilization, maybe like 20% or 10% or so. So the footage will try to stick to this position, but not as much as before. Now, of course, the problem is that you get this black borders here, and that is nothing that you want to have in your final render. So in that case, you can scale the footage so that you don't see this black border. And to do that, you can enable here auto scale and that will scale the footage so that you don't have the black border. And in case that it scales too much, then you can lower the maximum scale. So when you lower this value here and you can precisely scale that by holding down the shift key while dragging the slider. So when you turn this down, then you can lower the maximum scale just so that it doesn't get black here at the border. So in this case, I think that value should be enough. So that is one way you can do position stabilization. Now, of course, you don't want to take away too much of your footage. So 20% location influence is probably too much. So you should rather lower that to something really low, maybe like that. And especially on a panning shot, I think that the location influence is really not that needed either. Something that might be really useful though, is to stabilize the rotation. So let's turn down the location influence to zero and instead enable stabilize rotation. Now we do need a second marker to that. And of course we would just use this one. So pick that marker and then click on this little plus sign here. So now this marker will be used to stabilize the relation between these two points. Okay, so let's play back with Alt A and you can see here how this dashed outline is changing the rotation and with the auto scale, Blender will also make sure that even though it rotates here that you will never get black borders. All right, but why do you have to enable the stable setting here for the display? I mean, why can Blender not just use the stabilization altogether? Well, this is because of the following workflow, because somehow you have to apply this stabilization to your footage and to your renderings, because it is not much use if you have um, your stable footage, but then all of a sudden you have not stable uh, 3D objects or empties or stuff like that. So for the workflow, you have to enable 2D stabilization here to make sure that you do have the stabilization. Then you can control if it works 
by enabling this button, but for the final output, it doesn't matter if this is enabled or not. So let's disable it maybe, and then in the final composite, then you have to stabilize the footage and the 3D. So to do that, you just go to your compositing layout by hitting control left arrow, and then right here, after everything else, you can add a new node, so shift A, and then in the distort menu, you have the stabilize 2D node. So we can just drag that between here and then if it is not set automatically, you can choose which movie clip you want to use. And of course, it's that one in our case. So let's bring the viewer node here by control shift clicking on this node and you can see how it changes. So it will scale up and rotate and stabilize the footage and the 3D. And that is, of course, important because you have to uh, stabilize both, obviously. Now, the advantage to that is that if you are stabilizing moving objects or a shot with a moving camera, that you will keep the correct vector blur if you apply that. Because especially if you have sudden movements or fast movements, then you will have some motion blur in your footage and you have to match that motion blur in your 3D objects, of course. And we will find out how to do that later. But the point is the motion blur of your 3D has to match the motion blur of your footage. And by making sure that you composite footage, vector blur and 3D before you stabilize it, you will make sure that the at least the blur will match. Now, of course, if the blur in your footage is too much, then it will look just funny. Maybe we can uh, try that by stabilizing 100%. So, auto scale and stable, of course. So, with 100% position stabilization, um, you have, well, of course, perfectly stable footage, but there is some sudden blur, some sudden motion blur, and that looks totally weird, of course. So, you have to try to make sure to not stabilize too much. But, well, that is how you can use stabilization in Blender.